Oh. Man. Oh my goodness. This is Oh, it's a whole nother level right here, boy. Alright, so y'all let me tell y'all something now. This car is the car I came to look at. Unfortunately, they sold it. Um, very beautiful car, man. The C4, that's the that's the one that I want. I want a C4 because as y'all know, my grandmother had seven Corvettes. And the last year model that she had was a C4. Man, pull up to Corvette Warehouse, man. Yeah, I'm finna check out these. Check out what they got, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Cause uh, rub. Uh, your boy want to add a vet to the channel. Y'all already know how I feel about them vets. Granny had them, so I, I must get one. Oh, I must get one. I mean, get park real quick. Boom. So, oh, uh, I'm gonna cut this camera back on when I get off in there. Uh, I got, I can't remember the guy I talked to, but uh, I'm pretty sure he's in there. We're gonna get off in there and see what we can see. Trying to find the best deal. The car actually came up here to look at. They sold it. <sighs> that kind of hurt. But I said, you know what? I might as well go ahead and come up here anyway and see what they got. Let them explain to y'all. Um, what type of cars they get, which Corvette, Corvette, Corvette. That lets you know what kind of cars they get. But let me, oh, it's a vet, right? A couple vets outside, Jack. Ah. A couple vets outside, though. Yes, sir. All right, man. So when I get off in this building, all that good stuff, I will cut this camera back on. See, I'll stand to, oh, shit. I stay in tune with the in tune and hook. Smash that like button for your boy. Say fool lines though. We going up 2021, Jack. Yeah. Uh, so I'm in the building and I must say this is a very, very nice establishment, man. Oh yeah, man. Corvette Warehouse, man. Make sure y'all come check them out. Boom, they got C8s, man. They got C8s. Y'all see. Now this right here. I would love to have one, but this is. I gotta, I gotta make sure. I mean, this is the end goal for me. You know what I'm saying? So this one is sold. They sold this one. It was 86. That's nice. 2020. On 30 miles. This one has 15. Oh, this one sold too. It's 15. They're gonna ship that one out. So you see, they're getting them in. They're getting them out, man. Look at this blue one. Oh, nice. So this is 89. This one is 89. This is nice. I think this is a C7 Grand Sport. <clears throat> 55,000. Check it out. I like it. I like it. So, I'm going to take you out for the showroom floor, man. See, I can see what they got, man. Great guys up here, man. Very helpful. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Oh, my goodness. You know, if you notice, uh, more C7s are going to be in this area. Mm -hmm. And we have a few C8s also. Between the double doors of our earlier models would be over there. Okay. Oh, man. Uh, that one is a performance 67 with the correct uh, uh, factory side exhaust. Uh, this is a, a correct 1967 uh, automatic that's a four speed. I drive all three of these 
these uh, at least once every six weeks to keep them uh, in tune and reliable. Yes, sir. They've been all re uh, restored years ago. I actually uh, picked that one up over the time ago, drove it all the way back on the freeway. Oh, and that man. was uh, a party out for us to correct uh, mechanical fuel injection 61. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is the first week, and that is a uh, somewhat rare car. Here's an interesting point on these early ones. Mm -hmm. uh, 60 miles first year to, uh, to redesign the body slightly. And mm -hmm. they redesigned the rear tail section. And that's uh became later a stingray uh which came out in 63. Mm -hmm. But 61, 62 were almost identical. 62 had less chrome on it, but they had the same type of rear design that changed from the uh, uh, 60s and older. Right. What a change we have. Man. Yeah. Big change. Mm -hmm. well, what do we have? We have a mid engine, not a rear engine. The uh, mid engine is uh, engine four of the rear axle. Mm -hmm. That is called LT2. 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 of the owner he owns that one and his sets down here we crank that one up along with the other that is a and that's that's a very beautiful car that's a very old car so do me a favor mr yes. andy uh tell them where they where we are and where they can find you well we are a corvette warehouse we can be found in northwest dallas and our telephone number is mike bright number is 469-993-4828 and I'll be glad to discuss four best. Send me a text, ask me what you're looking for. I'll see if we have it. Uh, our inventory changes every month uh, dramatically. We sell between 40 to 50 cars monthly. And y'all do ship too, right? Absolutely. I've got, yeah. uh, I've sold uh, eight cars here in the last week, but we haven't been able to ship because of the yeah. weather. Yeah. Uh, however, uh, shipping is not an issue as far as uh, and we'll give you a quote before shipping. You use paper to shipping mm -hmm. at your end, uh, and we you'll know the, the cost. And we have put it out there nationally, and we have uh, preferred shippers. And uh, you'll get the best price with the, uh, the least amount of money for the, the most amount of shipping. So mm -hmm. we do it in a qualified way. You know where your car is, mm -hmm. and the uh, driver communicates uh, with you. And uh, before you get it, he'll uh, give you a heads up, uh, usually about uh, one to two hours before delivery so that uh, you know what time to expect. Well, I was going to say, uh, between those double doors or mm -hmm. earlier months, uh, mm -hmm. uh, we can send the cool Andy Rivera. Andy! Y'all make sure you look Andy, man. For uh, 40 plus years, but I'm a retired design engineer. Been involved with Corvettes uh, since the 70s. Oh, and, wow. And I'm uh, past president of the Anchorage Corvette Association in Anchorage, Alaska. Oh, really? Uh, That's and, cool. Yeah, and an uh, engineering company up to the back in the 80s. Uh, anyway, if we can be about, I'd be glad to. Well, let, let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. Do you have a bit? I know you do. I've got two. Two of them? I have an FRC, and I've put just a picture of the coupe on the 99, and I also have a uh, 09, and that's a uh, uh, Chevy Cruze that I've had for uh, almost 30 years. Oh, and wow. And I have an NCRS, so I, I like to keep things original. Original. I uh, feel you on that. For any and ever uh, Corvette buyer, I encourage keep your original parts. Uh, yeah. You may want to change things, that's fine. Uh, and if you do change anything, the most dramatic thing you can do to any Corvette is change those wheels. The wheels, yeah, the wheels yeah. are the most uh, dramatic thing that can happen, and it has a lot of uh, impact on the car. Yeah. What yeah. I like to do is go to the next generation and retro back. I have like oh, I have a like a C6. I get C7 wheels and put them on my C6. Oh, that's I have smart. a C5. I take the C6 rims and uh, retro those back. I've done that to both my cars, but I have the original sauce. That's cool. That's cool. Hey, right, yeah, I'm gonna cut this camera back on. Let me. Yep, I gotta right. add some something real quick. <laughs> y'all stay in tune. All right. So y'all, let me tell y'all something. Now, this car is the car I came to look at. Unfortunately, they sold it. Um, very beautiful car, man. The C4. That's the that's the one that I want. 
I want to see four because as y'all know, my grandmother had seven Corvettes and the last year model that she had was a C4. So that's what I'm looking for. Y'all check out this beauty. But before we check out this beauty, let me let Andy give you some knowledge on these C4s. Go ahead, Andy. Well, the uh, C4, as we know, is uh, one of the longest running generations from 84 to 96. And actually, 96 wasn't even supposed to be a model year for a C4. But due to uh, some R&D they were doing on the C5s, they held up the C4s one more year. Mm -hmm. What they did at 95, uh, this past year, they did the, uh, uh, over here where the gills are, mm -hmm. this uh, 95, 96 has the same, and that's uh, the distinguishing uh, look of the 95 and 96. You wouldn't know if it's a 95 or 96 unless you read them. Okay. But anyway, uh, the wheels were the same. Uh, they are the uh, uh, blade rims, 17 front, 17 rears, but they had a different width. Uh, you had the narrower ones up front, the wider ones up front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could tell. Uh, that and there's a 95, 96. So for those two years were the last years of this body style. Now, this particular one had a Lexan acrylic top. They call them glass tops. Mm -hmm. Glass, they're uh, a type of plastic. They uh, do have a, uh, a trans parent and uh, you know, so they can heat up on in the summertime in mm -hmm. uh, hot areas and they make different types of uh, uh, liners that can go in there to reduce the, uh, the heat by reflecting. But let me just show you the question. I mean, this thing is beautiful, y'all. Keep in mind, y'all, this car only has 20,000 miles on it. For 1995? Yes, sir. Man, that's amazing. What, uh, this one is on any C4s, if they're adjusted correctly, that should pop up just like uh, that one did. Mm -hmm. so, oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Up. Yeah. Bouncing up, it's a good thing. Uh, so as we roll it up. Is this the LT1? LT1. Right. LT1 came out in 92. Always make sure that this thing is off center so it doesn't fall on your head. Right. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Uh, now, this does have the aluminum. Uh, Heads on it and it has a uh, LT1 uh, Opti Spark. A lot of people had an issue with that. Yeah, I heard about uh, that. And here was the problem with that. Starting in '92 with the Opti Spark, uh, they had sealed it up so well as uh, time went on, they found out that it was sealed too good mm. because condensation, what happened on the inboard side of that Opti Spark, and what, uh, what happened with that, moisture would be getting on your spark and that would kill the whole day. Right. So, uh, some person in engineering came up with a brilliant idea, let's drill a hole in it, which by what they did is introduce heat uh, inside the Opti Spark enough to keep it dry. And that solved it right there. But why would, my question is on that, why would they put the water pump right on top of it? That was an engineer, <laughs> it's uh, probably about uh, location of uh, how things fit more than anything else, it's probably mm -hmm. more into manufacturing uh, the, that it has that, uh, anything else. I personally find that to be kind of odd too. Right. Also this had reverse flow uh, on the LT1 engine on the uh, cooling uh, system. So it, it went reverse from what the other L98s had on the, on the cooling uh, just going through the engine. But so on the, on, the, on the L98s they don't have that Opti Spark? No. Uh, they, okay. have, they were the last 1991 was the last year of the L98. It came out in 1985, replacing the cross fire injection. We won't even go there. But in <laughs> yeah, I heard that was a. <laughs> through uh, 91 was L98. Anyway, uh, the uh, L98 uh, had uh, some unique things going on it, and that is like the last year mm. of a regular distributor, and the distributor is located up by the firewall. And, uh, and that has a different uh, intake manifold, and all that was different. Mm. There are some other things with the. Uh, L98 that was kind of unique, and they used a, a balancer that they put uh, over on the, uh, I believe it was down on one of the pulleys, and uh, mm -hmm. you can uh, actually remove that and save about 10 pounds and add about five or eight horsepower. I also heard that on these, they take these off too. Uh, yes, and, and that yeah. is your uh, smog pump, and uh, I'm, I'm not uh, sure on a lot of the, as far as uh, compliance with uh, state and all mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. But I do know that uh, if you uh, actually, what you pointed at was the alternator. Alternator, yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> but they did have a, a, a pop down here. Uh, yeah. I just have to find out where it's at. Yeah. But anyway, on the LT1, if that's removed, you're just uh, removing one less drag to the engine. One of the real benefits uh, that came out of the 
uh, L98, or actually go all the way back to uh, uh, even the 84, is that we went to a electric fan motors instead of having a centrifugal fan, which was oh, the old school. Okay. And, uh, that uh, drug the engine down. You actually increased uh, horsepower by just getting rid of the centrifugal fan mm -hmm. uh, uh, itself and going with the electric fans. So uh, this, this year model had 300 horsepower, right? That is correct. Yeah. And they did make one year only, an LT4, and that was in 1996. Very coveted engine, only came with one transmission, six speed. You know what? All six speeds in 96 had the LT4 engine. And okay. uh, even though it says Grand Sports up by the throttle body, uh, that was desi uh, designed to have more performance for the Grand Sport, right. but uh, Chevrolet decided to make it available to all uh, six-speed transmissions for that LT4 engine. Yeah. And the, the ZR1 had a, a, the ZR five, right? The LT5? Uh, L uh, LS5. LS5, yeah, yes. okay. And yeah. that was, uh, uh, came out in 1990, mm -hmm. and uh, they increased the performance on that, I think, in the 90s. One or no correction, 92. Mm -hmm. And so 92 to 95, 95 being the rarest because it was, had the least uh, produced mm -hmm. in 95. And then in 96, they came out with the Grand Sport, which they reintroduced in uh, 2010. 2010. But it uh, was a little more available. They did a limited run of 1,000 units in uh, 1996, mm -hmm. and that was with the uh, a special color only. It was Admiral Blue with a white stripe, and uh, they made a coupe and convertible. Convertible was the rarest of the bunch, and so for uh, whatever reasons uh, you want to uh, on a Corvette that you can't drive, that'd be the one. Yeah, uh, yeah. You can drive it, it just it depreciates its inherent value. Right. I've, I've seen it. I've been looking into those also, too. But one quick thing, I'm, uh, now I'll get out of your way here. Mm. Uh, when this is idling on any uh, of your C4s, mm -hmm. this little diaphragm that you just squeeze and let go, uh, that uh, will enhance your, uh, it's like a, uh, a throttle. Uh, so you oh. can rev the engine. And, uh, by pushing that? By just pushing this right here. Oh, that is and cool. So you can rev up the engine if you want to listen to something and rev it a little higher or whatever, uh, or kick it down. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is the battery mo removal. You do not take all this, this uh, uh, equipment off mm -hmm. to get to the battery. You uh, take off that 10 millimeter there, turn the tire off to one side, take mm. out several screws there, open the door, there's one more screw there, and this whole panel drops Ooh. down, and then you take it out to the side. That is crazy. Four people try to disassemble, then they get halfway through it for the So that's not how you do it. But anyway, any questions on uh, uh, older, earlier vets, I'll be glad to go over with anyone because I've owned them, I know them. Yeah, he knows his stuff, y'all. He knows his stuff. One, you don't know. Yeah, yeah, man. So uh, I'm gonna ask him a couple more questions, then I'm gonna show y'all these beautiful vets. All right, y'all, stay in tune, man. Make sure you hope fans that like button. Cars, boys. We'll see, see how that works out. And, uh, if nothing else, he's gonna come in. We're gonna. This thing is nice. Oh my goodness. So is this, is this color? Is this a rare color or no? Uh, polo green. Mm, I'd have to look in my book to find out how many were made. I'd say uh, it's not as common as your three basic colors, black, white, and red. Mm -hmm. Those are the more uh, mainstream and silver. And uh, other than that, uh, the rest are going to be uh, a few of this, a few of that, you know, yellow, oh, green, okay. uh, different colors. They, they made a Admiral Blue also uh, in 95, mm -hmm. but they only made the Admiral Blue for the Grand Sport. You couldn't get Admiral Blue in any car but the Grand Sport in 95. Six, mm -hmm. and so that was a, a real big deal too. Now that I said that, I better go check my book. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let me let me ask you something. On the C4, in okay. your opinion, with all your knowledge, what's the best year to get? On the C4. C4. I like the 91. 91. The reason I like the 91 is it's an L98. Mm -hmm. It's the last year of the engine. It's the uh, first year of the uh, new body style, like the, the 90. Two through six, mm -hmm. and uh, it has this uh, the dash of, of the later ones, and uh, a lot of upgrades. You have an analog digital combination on the dash, which it carried all the way through, mm -hmm. and uh, it just it was more of everything in the one car with the least amount of uh, problems. That L98 will feel like the 300 horse that the uh, LT1 has without all the uh, problems. The way it feels like it has more power or as much power. It's the torque that it puts out. Mm -hmm. It's all about the torque. And then it makes you push it back in the seat and you nail it. And uh, it'll go and get up and go. However, if you run an LT1 next to 
and L98, the LT1 runs out of, the LT1 will really come on strong mm -hmm. in a higher range of uh, performance. Mm -hmm. uh, in the lower range, up to 100 miles an hour, uh, that L98 will hang, but after that, it's all LT1. It's gone. Yeah, it's all about displacement. So. Oh, look, hey, thank you for your time, man. Right. And when I get done recording, I will be in there to talk to you some more. Yes, sir. Man, this is a beautiful car. No problem, man. Yeah, check this out, man. So this is what I came up here for, man. Unfortunately, it is sold. Oh, thing is beautiful. Oh my goodness. Guess I'm gonna start off at the beginning, man. So these are the earlier model Corvettes. Man, they got a lot of them in here, man. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I'm back keep getting interrupted you know what i'm saying but yeah back to it let's start off with these bits man so i don't know i think these are already been done okay i think this one is a c5 i believe this, this one might i don't know hey i think that's c5 i think that's c6 i'm not sure i think 2019. Yeah, this one like it's been sold. This one is a stick. I see them, man. They got them bits up there. For real. For real. This one's a nice one. They got no price on it, so I don't know if they just got it in or what. Yeah, 2008 right here. Yeah, they, they, they definitely got these bits in there, man. I'm telling you. That is the cleanest one to me. God, I wish they wouldn't sell. Ooh. Man, rare gem. Somebody bought it. Yep. Y'all see, man, they got C8s and everything. Look, Corvette Warehouse, this is where we are, man. Y'all see it. This. All right, how you doing, sir? Gotta check it out, man. Convertible top on it, bro. I like this color. That's so. <clears throat> So this one was nice too. Uh, this was nice too. I really too much don't like this body style. This is nice too. Blue interior. It's nice. Yeah, man. Something about the vet. They're getting them in and out. That one sold. This one, they want $22,000. That yellow is nice. Like I said, man, this is a beautiful warehouse, man. Beautiful. Beautiful warehouse. Let's go get out from here. Man, y'all check it out, though, man. Let's check it out. Look at the C8. This one's so up. That's what I say. They're getting them up out of here, man. <laughs> so, get, oh, wow. Yeah, let me help. Let me show y'all this. This is my own car. Seventeen Grand Sport. 
Wait, look at the. Oh, that's hard. That's nice. Like it, like it. Heads up display. I like this stuff. Yeah. I said he got a little bit of everything, man. Yeah. Very nice. It's great. Thirty-six thousand miles. <clears throat> so nice. This is nice right here. How nice, man. I'm pretty sure it's. Great Thanks, man's game, man. I just want to apologize, man. Andy was really dropping a lot of knowledge on these Corvettes, man. Very knowledgeable guy, man. And I couldn't get everything he was saying because he was so much copyright. So um, next time I'm gonna work on that. And y'all, y'all just just listen to the music, man, and buy some these nice cars, man, and just. Enjoy yourself, man. I'm bringing you good content, man. Folks, smash that like button, man. Yes, indeed.
hood, yeah. So, what is the most expensive hook that you have right now? Right now. Uh, 2021, we just got in. Uh, and I believe that one's 90. Where's that one at? That one has the... This one? Yes. And that one has the titanium wheels. Why they do a pass through because I'm not sure you can get a bar located behind there for a five point. You mind if I sit? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Get the keys to the black hand. another level right here so. Doing all right. 
Got it, I heard pipes, of. Uh, because in the, the factory uh, correct would be uh, the pipes coming through there, unless it had factory correct uh, side pipes. Yeah, I like the side pipes. It has a little more like, sound to it. It looks more aggressive. Also. <laughs> So how much how much would something like this be? Uh, something in the eighty to ninety thousand dollar range uh, mm -hmm. because it is a correct in CRS car. It mm -hmm. doesn't have uh, it's not top flight. There's a few little things on it, but it's not anything to the untrained eye. Mm -hmm. But uh, consider this: this car is brand new, is around fifty two hundred. Wow, in nineteen sixty seven. Today, uh, I mean, uh, this car increased in its value. Uh, uh, up to into the 80s and some in the 90s. So uh, this one does have a unique interior, and that is correct. And it is the white interior. Oh, that it's, is uh, nice. Yeah, it, it is beautiful. 327. 327. Uh, uh, the horsepower rating on this one, I would have to look at the uh, car and the other stuff to identify the uh, output. Should be somewhere around 330 to. 350, uh, 360 horsepower. Wow, that's and, good. Uh, this one, it's more of a cruiser. It's a, uh, it has the automatic, mm -hmm. and uh, they both have power steering, uh, which is a big plus. Because right. The 61 has no power steering. No power, and it's hard to turn too. Yeah, that's why you have a big steering wheel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, largely, than my size, you're gonna have a, uh, you're gonna be compromised just getting that to it. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, this is a, a very forgiving car. Drives excellent. It doesn't bother me. It, it's, a, it's a good, solid car. Mm -hmm. uh, however, it doesn't have performance. It just, this is all about performance. Right. So this is a cool car to drive. So what? How much would this be? All uh, right, you're probably in the uh, 
probably about a $10,000 series. This, okay. That's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, one of the more challenging things was the headlights on how they rolled up. They were electric. They mm -hmm. went back until 68. And you let the motors in those. Uh, and if you didn't let off the uh, turning them up, you could uh, destroy the gears and cause it to roll up. So you have to know when you quit uh, pushing the button. Yeah. That's cool. Check out this one over here, man. This, that is nice. That is nice. Beautiful car. Yeah, that's a beautiful car. The on this was all about the chrome. Mm -hmm. The chrome was deleted in 62. Same body, identical body. However, this was missing. These were uh, deleted, and they had a, a code that had a chrome piece that ran across here, and that eliminated uh, these chrome over there. And uh, what really makes this unique is this one right here. Fuel injection. That was a mechanical fuel injection. I had a 62 mechanical fuel injection uh, years ago, and that was uh, a challenge. And it's yeah. always uh, a very sensitive thing. But in a collectability, that will make it make a whole bunch more money. Yeah, man. Hey, hey, Andy put me on game, man. Hey, for real. Y'all come up for you. Make sure you see Andy, man. Uh, I appreciate it. He know his stuff, man, for real. I try to put you in the right direction. Yeah. Anything you don't need, something you may not consider. Mm -hmm. so it's all about understanding how these cars work and what your uh, goals are in a quarter. Man. It, it, just having one is, uh, is fun. It, yeah, it and is. I, I got to have one. You're in a different brotherhood when you get into a Corvette because everybody now that has a Corvette is going to recognize you. Right. And they recognize the car and the person that's driving. So it's a, that's it's, true. It's that's unique. true. <laughs> we appreciate you. Okay. Yes, indeed. All right. I'll get out of your way. Hey, y'all. Uh, man, I think that's going to wrap this video up, man. This video already kind of long, man. Hey, man, live your life. Go for your dreams. Go for your goals, man. Don't let nobody stop you. Don't let nobody tell you you can't do something. You know what I'm saying? MSG, I see it in the main thing. Hey, never stop grinding. It's more than just a model or a sense of real life. That's how I live every day.